account 29.6 million up from the 24.5 million recorded in the 2010 population and housing census this clearly will have some implications on the country's resources and probably the reason why some countries have laws that control the rate at which people give birth as a way of matching their resources to population growth but here in ghana it is the free range so looking at our new population figure which obviously doesn't match the resources available to us how do you suggest we control ghana's population growth there should be a law maybe they should pass a law that governs the number of children i mean the number of uh, children you have to give birth to okay. the kind of policy to the number of birth each individual woman is supposed to give. Because comparing our population to our mineral resources or the things that we have here, it doesn't really tell you. That means the population are more than what we really have in the country. So I would not really go for laws, actually. But if situations improve economically, it will also improve societal, I mean, our uh, way of life, and that will impact positively on the number of children. I don't believe in restricting humans as to what they should do. I don't even think we should control it because we have not reached anywhere. Um, uh, elsewhere, if you look at China, China is making a big time this time around just because it has the numbers, you understand? Uh, human capital is, is, is more than riches. And so we have not reached anywhere where we start. We will say we want to control the birth, the birth rate now. All right. All right. So those are some comments on the street. But on Facebook. why do you want people to stop having children? Well, yeah, because you want to control the population, and uh, because if you have too many people, you know, the the population is beyond. Um, your control, it tends to mean that you, you wouldn't have enough resources to take care definitely, of all of them. Definitely and so. you must also balance the population in a certain way that you don't have too many on one side. So yeah, you, te you tend to re realize if you have too much of a youthful population and yeah. they don't have jobs to do, yeah, then it means they can't take care of They become problem. dependent. Exactly. And then when you also tend to have too many of the aged of the aged then productivity suffers it's, it's also so suffers. so yes you have to really so balance it has to be it. balanced let's check out what you're posting of richard of century says illiterates uh, produce more kids than they can cater for let expand the educational infrastructure and let more women get good levels of education they will have two or three kids on the five six seven recorded among illiterates but don't forget that it's not only women who get <laughs> women don't impregnate themselves so the education should be for men and women but they, they tend to say that if you have a, a, a literate woman mm. she's more likely to resort to family planning like so then she'll be opting for the family planning uh, methods. But what if she, methods. you know, going for family planning, it's not the decision of the woman alone. It's two people who decide. Yes. So she goes for family you're planning more likely and her to marriage have, suffers. Is that and, what she if she's, and if she's educated too, it means she's likely to be working. And if she's working, then she knows that she can't have babies just in <laughs> Nelson Kofi, okay, so... Uh, we move on to Kuma uh, Senujo says, men are the best resource a nation needs to develop and, that, and not what's beneath her soil. What has Israel and Japan got in terms of material resources, yet they are well developed. Ghana le needs leaders who are visionary, pragmatic, and are foresight. That is, leaders who would come up with strategic programs such as mass and quality literacy. Huge investment in ICT because that, that's the future of any serious nation. That means business pursue and implement a vigorous industrialization program, etc. Rain Jonas says, just educate the girls. I know several uneducated ladies below 25 years who have more than five children. The women and girls hold the key to the number of children they have. Extensive <laughs> education plans will keep them away from sexual exploitation by the men. Educated women are powerful women. <laughs> 
And as this Donla says, families should be allowed to have any number of children they want. However, politicians and civil servants should stop siphoning their limited resources. I personally don't think national birth control is the way out to keep the situation. Benjamin Sokaye says this was why JM was building and upgrading some because the population will reach 35 million. Now our chiefs are also selling farm lands to estate developers. Hmm. And Abdallah Moro comes in to say, I think the public still needs more education on the importance of family planning, especially the misconceptions some people still have about it. And Hussein Adams writes, the population numbers are not correct, always approximately. If you want the real figures, just conduct the national census. All right, and Emmanuel Stainer says improve family planning, education, and awareness, and improve infrastructure in other regions. Rural urban migration is challenging development. And those are some interesting comments on Facebook. And also, there have been quite a number of layoffs in the mining sector, with Goldfields Ghana Limited being the latest, where some 1,500 workers at its Takwa mines have been laid off. But the decision has been heavily resisted, leading to the arrest of seven workers on Monday after a protest turned bloody. Question, are you worried? Considering the fact that the mining industry contributes massively to the country's economy. Mm, I'm worried. You know, now there's no job. And that's why some of us, uh, some of our brothers do live on. Okay. So when something like that happens, it worries. It's, if they, can, if they can't give them full salary, at least they can be there and then they can share the sorry that they have been taken into two. The mining sector, the one we or the other, provides income for the government as a whole. It's a sector where when the youth gets into also, they could also make a living from that sector also as well. So anything that has to do with the closing down of the sector, I think it will go a long way to be, uh, you know, a burden to the citizen, the economy, and the nation as a whole. So in a way, we are more so worried. It could be due to their management. They think, I don't know the reason why they're trying to lay people off. I think it's going to be a problem in the country because one, it's going to increase the unemployment rate. A lot of people are going to come home, how to take care of their families. It's going to be a problem. Everybody is, uh, or every enterprise aims as, I mean, higher productivity. And if that is what is going to, you know, increase productivity uh, to them, I mean, the industry, then well, they, 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 I think they have no option than to go because of, you know, new emerging trends in the, you know, the mining industry. Because what one man can do uh, today uh, wasn't like yesteryears. So maybe they weigh the options, and you know, they see that if they lay them off, it's not going to affect them. Well, interesting comments there. That's not a lot more of your messages are on Facebook. Let's check them out. Bernard Kofi says the government owes its people a duty to protect them. There are no jobs, but the government will just stand by and watch. They have petitioned Parliament long ago, but they kept quiet. Now, everyone is talking about it because it turned bloody. This government can't create jobs and it can't protect a few, jo few with jobs too. All we know is making others. Uh, rich while our situation deteriorates. Abdullah Moro says, I'm very worried about it. I just imagine how their families will manage with life. And it's some of these things that bring about the armed robbery, particularly the approach they are using to end Kalam Say. Isaac Survivor says, There's time for everything, so I'm not worried. <laughs> and um, Elias, okay, <laughs> I don't quite get what. <laughs> This people are saying these are very interesting comments too over there. But finally, we're often told that once you break up, there should not be any form of communication whatsoever between you and your ex. Why? Because he or she can be a hindrance to your next relationship. But what if your ex uh, finds himself or herself in a situation of life and death? and your kiss is the only antidote to bringing him or her back to life. Will you do it or not, and why? Oh yes, I will. 
oh, he's my ex, fine, but life, you can't, you don't know what life entails. Maybe he can, if I save him, he can do something like in the future. So then you just for see everything like forget about any differences you people had and just save the person life is life so you just, uh. yes i will, Why will you? <laughs> uh, the reason being that is at the first place i wouldn't wish my ex to die and if um, it is my kiss that will actually bring her back to life why wouldn't I? And the fact that she is my ex doesn't mean there is this enmity between us. So I will still wish to do it just to save her life. But if I'm also going out, it would be something that I will still seek permission from my current uh, girlfriend or wife. That is the situation and this is what I can do. This is what I'm doing to help my ex save her life. Yes, I will do it. Because it's just a case, it's nothing. Yes, I would because... I wouldn't want to be the reason why someone would die. Like I do, I wouldn't want to be the reason for someone's death. So then, if I can do that just to save the person, I will. Hmm. All right. So a lot of people are saying I will do, I will do. But in the event that your new boyfriend or girlfriend or partner is not in agreement, then you will see. Wow, well, that's so Samia. Mm -hmm. Let's check out what you're Move right, Mama says that will be my chance to wear the new funeral cloth. No. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. And> Wanda <laughs> says, Bay, I promise to love you until a pregnancy do us part. <laughs> ah. Benjamin says, if only she's also ready for it, why not? Divine love for humanity never fades. Kiki says, take a hand and say, tell my mom and dad I said hi. See you on the other side. Oh, so nice. Obama seriously. Says, I'll, grab that, I'll grab that opportunity with all the energy in me. Uh, hashtag blessing in disguise. Joe Lipton says, we'll definitely do that because I forgave her long ago. Ismail Halil says, I'll surely give it uh, to her the best way I can. <laughs> and Philipson says, why not? I will save her because she was once a new cloth before and kissing her will not change anything. And our uh, crazy Regina says, just kiss to rescue her life. I will do it. Do -do. And Abdallah Imura says, I'll just do it to save her life. Albert says, why not? She can't be my enemy and it's life and death. Isaac Survival says, X means everything has expired. I rest my case. Like, seriously. Uncle Asu says, why not? I'll do it. Life is precious and at least she she has given me pleasure and pressure before. <laughs> and Ebenezer Aquarium Buff is a kiss, dear. Say, yes, she. Say something different. Like, seriously, I'll say something next time. And Gracia says, it's impossible for a kiss to save a dying human. Never. <laughs> and Jordan comes seem to say, me? She can go to hell. I care less. I beg. Next question. <laughs> oh, please. Don't be harsh. And Rashid Mohammed says, I'll do it on one condition, but that one will be in my brain. <laughs> and Komnesa says, the Bible says we should forgive, but I will get there late, so I will attend her funeral. Oh! <laughs> and then he says, it depends on the circumstances in which we separated. Probably it may be God punishing her for me. Rasa. And Abdul Hassan says, if it's it comes to issues of saving life, I would do. Human is so important to me. Very interesting comments there.